Hey, listeners. So this week I have a coworker of mine joining me, which is really cool because I think one thing that happens, especially now during the pandemic, is that we don't get to know our coworkers very well sometimes or only know the people that we work directly with. And so it's really special to get to have a long discussion with someone that I work with that's not about our work. I mean, we maybe talk about it a little bit just because we're people. But overall, we talk about everything else, and I really love that we got the opportunity to do that. And I was thinking about maybe asking my listeners, what do you know about the people you work with? Do you know about their hobbies or what they like to do on the weekend? And now that you're remote, are you talking to people who you may have only passed in the hall before, or is it going to come on to a year that you haven't even talked with them? So maybe just... Maybe you want to just say hi, or maybe you want to invite someone to a 15-minute catch-up or a 30-minute catch-up or something. Uh, I have a few colleagues, because I moved to London. I'm not in the U.S. anymore on the time zone that a lot of my coworkers who are my friends are, so I have a couple that we make plans every once in a while just to hang out and talk, you know, outside of when we're working and just catching up, and it's really fun. So maybe it's something to think about doing because a lot of us are going to be at a year pretty soon of not seeing people or longer. I'm going to be at a year in a week because the last time I saw my colleagues was in Mexico at a company meeting and we're not able to do that this year, obviously. And it's fine. I mean, I'm fine with it personally because I just think it's more important that everyone's safe. And I think, you know, maybe we'll meet later in the year, but it's pretty weird. And I work remotely anyway, so I'm used to it. But I know a lot of clients and people that I talk to or work with outside of my company really had a lot of adjustment to make. They had a lot to get used to because they were used to going into an office. And it's been about five years for me not doing that. So I didn't mind it, (laughs) but uh, I definitely understand where people are coming from when they don't like working from home. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this chat. Uh, Sebastian, or Seba as I call him, and a lot of people call him, it's his nickname, uh, is really just really a cool guy. We talk a lot about some things I don't know very much about around fitness and CrossFit and extreme sports, and also a really cool story about his brother. So anyway, it's a pretty light and fun episode, and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to More Than Work, the podcast reminding you that your self-worth is defined by more than your job title. I'm Rabia, an IT project manager, comedian, nonprofit volunteer, and sometimes activist. Every week, I'll chat with a guest about pursuing passions outside of work or creating meaningful opportunities inside the workplace. As you listen, I hope you'll be inspired to do the same. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to More Than Work. So this week, we're talking to actually a coworker of mine at uh, Software Development and IT Consultancy, but we're going to be talking about everything else that he does outside of that. Sebastian Villamarine, uh, he's an extreme sports enthusiast and an entrepreneur, in addition to being my coworker. So we're both kind of together now to talk about our hobbies, or really his hobbies. This is one of mine. So hey, welcome, Seba. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, I love that you have invited me uh, to be part of this. Uh, I'll be following you. So pretty excited to be here. Awesome. Yeah, it's good to have you here. So why don't you just tell people just a little bit about yourself that you just want to intro before we get into it? Uh, well, so I think it's important to say that I'm Argentinian. I live in Mar del Plata, Buenos Aires. So you have an idea of where we're doing this uh, podcast from well i've been uh, into programming for almost 14 years but i think i've been longer uh trying to do uh a lot of uh other stuff and that's what we're gonna talk about right yeah exactly yeah because no one wants to hear us talk about our, exactly <laughs> like me managing people and you having to just develop everything. So 
Um, so you're into a lot of things. And so when we say extreme sports enthusiast, what sports does that entail for you? Well, I know that this won't come up on video, but this is a pretty good show. Oh, so he's showing, <laughs> he's showing a, a wrist with a, a brace on it, basically. Yes, exactly. Uh, a little something that happened last week. So <laughs> I've been into skate and longboarding for uh, a couple of years, uh, I would say, uh uh, for almost 10 years and I've been like into every different discipline in, in, in um, longboarding because well, you, you have uh, different types of riding. Uh, downhill, you might have seen uh, on videos, the, the crazy guys just going on, on mountain roads uh, full speed uh, and I had a couple of those trips from where I got uh, a, a couple of scars too, but <laughs> everything's fine. And this was actually a really uh, silly accident. It was that the floor was just wet and I was trying to do oh. a, a, a little downhill, but on the coast where I live and the, the skate just like slipped from my feet and uh, fall. Oh. Uh, kind of hard, but nothing serious. So I done also a lot of uh, what is called uh, carving and dancing, which is more of like moving around on the board while you try to do tricks walking on the on the board. And uh, well, I'm I'm not that good in uh, what is called uh, freestyle or freedive, which is more of a, a couple of tricks with the board. And uh, like two years ago, I tried to start myself into skateboarding because we have a really nice uh, skate park here on the coast. Uh, been practicing that a lot, um, mostly on the on the summer, which I can go really early into the skate park where there's nobody around. I can slam myself into the ground without nobody seeing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and that happened quite a few times. Uh, but I, I think I'm getting uh, better at it with, uh, mm -hmm. uh, with every hour that, that, that I put off for there. Uh, obviously, I love everything that is uh, on top of a board. So we had one of our company meetings in uh, the Salt Lake. Um, yeah. Uh, we did snowboard there and I snowboard uh, a couple of times in my life, but I pretty much enjoy it. Uh, also, a big uh, paddle boarder. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of uh, paddle boarding and moving to surfing. Uh, I, we just went to a surf shop to get my girlfriend's a new fan board. Uh, custom made that we got uh, this summer. Uh, had a couple of details uh, on the table, on the on the board, so we're just gonna wait till they fix that, and maybe we're lucky enough to have it next week, and we're actually able to take it into the water. Awesome. And and what else? Well, sports. Uh, besides that, uh, I know that I'm speaking a lot, but. Uh, I started like my my fitness uh, journey uh, a lot of years ago um, uh, on running and which moved me into the gym for a motorcycle trip uh, to get like some muscles on my on my back so I could uh, like resist all the all those hours riding. Uh, that took me into boxing and that took me into CrossFit, which I started, I have mm -hmm. to say, uh, like six years ago. And I actually, I'm the owner of a CrossFit uh, box here in Mar del Plata. Um, uh, just in case that uh, they lock down uh, everybody in again, I'm uh, just building my home gym. 
which <laughs> so nothing yeah. can stop you. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. Idea. Yeah. So that's a lot of different activities. And I think the skateboarding is pretty cool because skateboarding, I remember being on a skateboard when I was, you know, 10 and 12. And then even in college, I found one on campus mm-hmm. and took it and it was one hard fall. I was done one hard fall down a pretty big hill there, but I was done. So how do you overcome those things like the injuries you have now and just like those scary falls I, and get back on? I never had like a major injury and, and I know it hurts when you fall and more uh, now than ever being uh, 37 years old. But I think that you're never old enough to start something new if you take the necessary precautions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say that the most important thing is to protect yourself. Uh, wear a helmet, wear protection pads, and you're going to fall. Every once mm-hmm. in a while, you're going to fall. Uh, and I know that if you really liked it, if you really feel that that's for for you, just get up and try it again. Try to overcome fear. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, of getting hurt uh the the better you get at it the less you're gonna fall and the more that you're gonna enjoy the the sport and and go easy in the beginning so if you fall won't be that hard if something happens to you uh it won't be that bad that's true so with the downhill skating i've seen some videos of that and actually from other coworkers. but what's the fastest you've gone do you have any idea (laughs) On a board? Um, I would say around uh, 70 kilometers an hour. It's like 35 miles, something 40-ish. Something like yeah. yeah. So it, yeah. Was, oh, it, was, it was pretty fast for me. And I know that the other guys on that road trip uh, would go faster. But yeah, it, it, it was my... My first rodeo, and I, I didn't, I didn't want to go uh, too crazy either. But that's good. So you know your limits and stick within them. So CrossFit's gotten really, really big. <laughs> I mean, it's a lifestyle, right? Like, do you CrossFit, bro? Kind of thing, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, that that is true. That is true. <laughs> but for you, so how did you decide to go from starting out doing it and then just to hey, I'm gonna have a gym. I'm gonna do this and invest in it as a you know second uh, job. Really. Well, might have to do with um, moving from what I was studying and what I started. I was studying in a city nearby called Tandio. It's like mm-hmm. two and a half hours from where I'm living right now, which is uh, the place where I was born. Uh, and I started the discipline there. When I moved here, I when I was thinking of moving here, I talked to my coach and it's like, man, it's like I'm, I'm moving. I don't know what to do. Uh, I really want to keep on doing CrossFit, but I know you. I don't know you were my first box, and he was like, dude, the important thing is that you keep on doing what you like. So mm-hmm. go there, find a place, and happened that the place the first place that i signed in when when i came back to mar del plata i met this coach which is now my my associate uh and we knew each other also from another place another gym which is where Mm -hmm. and this was gonna come into the conversation at some point where my youngest brother used to train and so that's where the contact started. And at some point, she left at the box. We would still see each other uh, when my brother was training. And just came up to my mind. It was like, there's a lot of people following you and that want to uh, work out with you because you're you're a great coach. And... Uh, uh, why don't we try to find a place for uh, all these people and have our own place? So that's where the idea came from. 
and well, basic, basically, we started looking for a place, and it came to happen. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, do you, as far as what CrossFit means for you and working out, and then now owning your own place? And it sounds like you really were going to miss it if you didn't do it. Um, what's been the most rewarding thing about providing a space for other people to do this, I guess? Like, because I'm sure when you moved there um, to Marta Plata and didn't have a place to go, I'm sure other people didn't. So how does it feel now that you're able to provide that for someone? Well, it's it, it started every day uh, thing of going to the gym, saying hi to that community that we have formed and it's the the stories that i will get from uh, people telling me that they're learning uh, a new uh, uh, a new sport uh, or that something on their everyday life has changed or they will able to carry over something that they're doing at the gym to to their uh, to their homes, like for example, a mother telling me that she had to move a lot of boxes and she learned how to lift a heavy weight from the floor without hurting her back, and that she was able to do those stairs like a dozen times and she wasn't even tired. Mm-hmm. And it's. That's that's the whole idea behind it. It's to improve your health and uh, just to be a, a fitter person, and that you have that that extra energy to you know play with your kids or don't be afraid of learning a new sport. I have friends that, for example, this summer, uh, this summer started um, learning uh, how to surf, and they were like. Man, jumping on the board is like doing a burpee, and mm-hmm. I can be on the water for hours, and I'm not even tired. I want I want to do it more and more, and they uh, go to the classes, and you can see the smile on their faces even when they're suffering. Well, they they don't have <laughs> that same smile, but I know that the the people is is happy, and that mm-hmm. that's what makes me happy. Cool. And for you, when you started, I mean, you evolved into it over time. Like you had a functional reason for wanting to just get more strength was your long motorcycle trip. Yes, exactly. But then over time, right, you did it. How has it changed life for you and maybe just how you approach things all all, all around? Uh, well, it firstly gave me the courage to face all these challenges and you learn that most of the time the blockers are in your head, right? Not in your body. If you train your body, uh, it's going to be able to do uh, whatever you want. Uh, run uh, a marathon, and we have people in the company that done things crazier than that. And it's like, I know, everything that's come like into my my view fall on my hands like do you want to participate on this race it sounds awesome let's do it i don't know one time i was on vacations in spain and i had this crazy idea of uh going to menorca spain and i just like Mm -hmm. got there with a backpack rented uh, a bike i never done a mountain biking in my life and I ride for five days I did around 200 kilometers and I did a whole loop on the island so uh, <laughs> stopping on different places and it's giving me that it's giving me the freedom to feel that uh, I can so I, I think that there's nothing that you will tell me Ah, uh, let's try this, and I will be. Ah, uh, no, I'm. I'm afraid. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. I can say I might not be able now, but if I try, I'm sure that I'm gonna get it. That's awesome, and that's 
I mean, it's inspiring just to think about, you know, you start from nothing. I think that's one thing that makes people, and I certainly me has made me afraid of even going to the gym sometimes. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to fail in front of people or look embarrassed. So I just don't do it. And then the minute you start to do stuff over time, yeah, you do, you gain the confidence to keep trying. And I know you've lived, I mean, you lived on the road for a long time too. So with traveling and how do you feel about travel? I mean, that's a big thing that you do in addition to. Uh, Well, yeah. And that has changed this year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This year. Well, yeah, that's a good point. This year, all of it changed. All of it changed. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, it kind of blew this uh, castle of cars that we had for 2020 were, uh, thinking on going to the US with my girlfriend for around three months and we mm-hmm. kind of wanted to have this CrossFit trip. The idea was to start on the West Coast and go up, maybe have, go to Hawaii and work out, go to different uh, boxes uh, while we're traveling, uh, ending up on the CrossFit Games, which are, I think, in in, in, Ju- in Ju- right? yeah, in Wisconsin around July, uh, and then continue a trip and at some point uh, come back to Argentina. But yeah, it's just uh, yeah. went to <laughs> yeah, uh, went, but yeah, yeah, it went there. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, went to somewhere. Yeah, um, down the, down but, the drain. Let's say. And you lived on the road for. a what, a year at one point or something like that? How long were you gone from Argentina? The first time that I went to Europe? No, I, I think I never uh, traveled for more than three months or been uh, out of Argentina more than three months in a row. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the first the first Euro trip was uh, crazy because it uh, was my first trip by myself, first time visiting Europe. Uh, and I just have like a rough idea of what I wanted to do, the places that I wanted to visit. And I was like on the big cities. Well, that, that was also my first experience on traveling and, and working uh, remotely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we can say that my life kind of prepared me for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was, I you know, staying for a week in Rome, renting uh an apartment, um, you know, doing some sightseeing in the morning, working in the afternoon, uh, working out at night. And then during the weekends, I would do all the traveling to get to another place, maybe visit some like, smaller cities and like that. I moved uh, for three months nonstop, carrying everything with me, even uh, in the middle of that trip, I went to... Uh, a heavy metal fest in France and I had like this tiny tent which some Finnish guys that were camping right next to me uh, that I met on on the last day they called it the tomb because it, it, yeah it, it was a small like <laughs> like down to the floor tomb that on the last day so many people trip with the with the wires that it just fall down I was sleeping like a, <laughs> On, on a sack, it, it was not even a tent. Uh, and imagine that I carry all the things from work uh, with me. So I had my laptop uh, in there with my backpack and everything. And it was like a, a couple of days of rest after the, after that three days festival, and then back to work. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I gathered all these crazy stories uh, while traveling and. Yeah, since that time, I think I've done it like two or three more times, but I've stayed with friends. I went back to Barcelona a lot of times, uh, stay with uh, co-workers that they were, they were kind enough to let me stay with them. And yeah, I might have stayed for a month in Barcelona and then do another uh, small like hitchhiking trip and yeah, uh, so this year, this past year, the adventure was going to be do the the USA trip, but well, 
it is yeah. what it is. And the COVID-19 happened and the pandemic happened and suddenly we were all uh, quarantined for here. It was around six months, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it was a long time there. Yeah, yeah. And you guys didn't really... I mean, you couldn't do anything, I think. Like, we were, I'm in London, right? So we were allowed to go outside. At one point, the worst one was go outside once a day. You can't sit down or anything outside. You can go outside for once a day to exercise. Don't talk to anyone, see anyone, and go home. And I think you guys even had it more strict there. At the beginning, it was, yeah. We had all these kind of crazy rules. Uh, (laughs) and, And, like, slowly, they started to give people more flexibility and the beginning was like yeah it's just you can just walk like 500 meters from your house uh, but for some people that was not even enough to get to the market so right yeah <laughs> you can't go anywhere no you can't go anywhere uh so yeah that, that, that was funny yeah and uh, well we had when everything closed, we had to rent all of uh, the, the box equipment. So the people uh, we wanted to oh. keep uh, serving the people somehow. So we rented all the equipment and we started uh, having Zoom classes. So huh. it, it was it was nice because in the beginning, the community was uh, pretty tired or working out together from home. We at least will see each other uh, on, on on camera, and uh, that that will give you a lot of motivation not, not to stop. And it, it got harder and harder, uh, eh, but um, I believe that oh, it, everybody uh, made an effort to keep on going, uh, but we all just wanted to go back outside and go back to, to the gym. So we started working out outside at some point. And uh, when we were allowed, we went uh, back on the, on the gym again. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's been hard. Yeah. No, this year definitely changed all that. So you mentioned your brother and him working out. So can you tell me a little bit? I know that's an really great story an interesting story can you tell me a little bit about that yes and uh, what what i why i brought that up um like the 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 starting of all this having my own uh crossfit box uh a lot of um what's been going on 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 my life and uh what my motivation is, it's uh, thanks to my brother. So my youngest brother, Rodrigo, uh, he has a disability on his leg. He was born with that. Uh, He's now uh, 20 years old. And he's been a competitive um, Paralympic uh, or, yeah, Paralympic weightlifter or say it's uh, adapted with lifting um, with uh, the goal of getting to the Paralympics. Um, he won several medals through the years. Um, when he started, um, uh, I think it was 2012, he got his first medal here in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. He got uh, a silver medal and the Para Pan American Games mm-hmm. uh, on the, the junior, um, or the, the juvenile uh, category. So uh, from that time, he's just been... Uh, a hard uh, worker. He's been going after that for years and years, obviously with the objective of uh, getting into the 2020 Tokyo Paralympics. 
and lucky enough for him, he had made the the, the needed score uh, on his last competition, which was in Kazakhstan uh, in 2019. And yeah, I, I was lucky enough to be there. I was I was in Europe and I was like, well, it's closer than Argentina. <laughs> so why not <laughs> take, a, take a fly and go there? Uh, so yeah, I uh, uh, was lucky enough to, to be there when he made that mark. Uh, and it's been an, an amazing journey. It's one of those things that are meant to happen. Uh, there's there's a really crazy story uh, behind how he his coach for a lot of years found him when he was uh, younger. I think that he was uh, around uh, 12, 13, I believe, the first time that... Uh, he saw my brother on the street and he like just ran from one block crossing the street to the other just to talk with my brother, my, my, my dad, who was with him at the moment, uh, to invite him to this team that he was forming with the idea of uh, training kids into a adaptive weightlifting. A, um, my dad imagine not knowing anything about that it was like well no this guy is crazy you you can't do that you you can't make that effort uh, with your muscles and the problems that you have uh, two years after that happened they found each other on the street again and i think they had a similar conversation but it was I remember you, I met you like two years ago and this is happening. I'm still forming that uh, a group of people. Do you want to join us? And from that first time, my brother still had that thing like uh, aching on the back of his head. And the next day he started and since then, he never stopped training. So it's been quite quite a few years of uh, just fighting for what now it's uh, his dream. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it's a very beautiful story. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. It's amazing. And then Rodrigo, I mean, doing that obviously inspires you. I mean, people can oh, yes. see us talking that I can see on your face mm-hmm. and how has it has it affected you or like since that happened did it change your mindset about about things and in what way yes so i think that i can resume it on a tattoo that i have on the back of my leg which says uh never give up mm-hmm. and that that is the mindset it's like Every time that I'm struggling with something, when I feel that I can't, uh, I just think on him and how he doesn't complain uh, and how things are uh, way way easier on every sense for for us, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, as soon as I think on that, I, I stop complaining. And yeah, and what, whatever it is, I just try to make it happen. And I think that is reflected in just what you were talking about earlier, that like if you fall, you get back up and you mm-hmm. try again and yeah. you just keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm sure he's had this working very hard. Too. Oh, uh. yeah. A lot, and not only in the sense of working out and lifting weights. Uh, I think he has gone to more than 15, 16 uh, surgeries 
Mm. So, and each one of those uh, meant uh, weeks or months uh, back in the bed and then having to uh, gain all the, the, all the strength again on the legs, uh, relearning how to walk. Uh, so, and, uh, and he has um, never uh, stopped and, uh, I'll say, uh, like oh, yeah. Given up. Yeah, exactly. Given up. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty cool to go to events of that level. I've had actually one Olympic, um, a UK Olympic swimmer on already. Oh. And <laughs> just hearing about her, like, I hate, I always hate like journeys <laughs> become such a, a word where, you know, we say journey for everything, but it is a journey. Um, and hearing about that and then to hear about your brother too, and just that he, you know, talked to a coach and got involved like that. And just that he kind of had the idea to keep, keep trying. I think that happens to a lot of people. A lot of people could probably relate to you have an opportunity and maybe you don't get to take it the first time or you don't take it the first time, but the idea doesn't go away. And eventually at some point you have to, in a way, you know, Mm -hmm. so I'm sure even with you owning the business, um, no, that's a great story. And it's cool. You've been able to support him too and be there along the way. That's awesome. Do you guys work out together? Uh, Usually we don't because he, he trains uh, with his uh, current coach now, but at the beginning of the pandemic, when he couldn't access the, the equipment, uh, we would do some bench presses here at home. Yeah. Uh, but for example, uh, this week that he's staying uh, with us and at my house because my, my parents are on vacation, so he got to to stay with us for a couple of days. Uh, actually, yes, I have my class at uh, eight, and he's gonna, he's gonna he's gonna join. He should be oh, nice. something there on the on the rower or the bike or the skier. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's fun. Do you ever does he he can probably bench more than you by now? Oh yes, he's <laughs> I, yeah yeah yes yeah, he can bench press me. <laughs> that he's, <laughs> no, he's always been better than me in that. And I, yeah. w- when we, when, when he came, he came home, and I was like, "Well, what do you have to do today?" Okay, um, I'm gonna do the same weights that you, you're, you're doing. Uh okay, let's go with the yeah. first one. Well, we're good. Uh now which way? This bumper, this bumper. Yeah, put it on. Like, mm, okay, dude. I think that that's it for me. I'm just gonna stay with the, <laughs> with um, the, the the previous uh, lift, and I'll let you do your stuff. But uh, yeah, no, no, <laughs> she it was just too much for me. You just have to know your limits. Yeah, right? exactly. don't make them up. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. who's yeah, yeah, an Olympic level athlete. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I got to test. Um, myself against one and he won obviously (laughs) awesome um so in addition to all this fitness and your crossfit business you're also an entrepreneur you've got some sunglasses that you're working on so can you talk about that project that is true and see how everything connects right because um my friend who i'm working on 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 developing these sunglasses We'd met at uh, this first CrossFit gym that I joined uh, when I came back to Mar del Plata. And he also uh, helped me um, put together my my CrossFit box. And now we're working on this other idea, which are uh, wooden uh, sunglasses. So Mm -hmm. these are wood frames. A made of uh, a single piece of wood so it, it they're beautiful because it's kind of uh, like a handcrafted work being able to 
uh, get that frame from a, a single piece of wood. Obviously, we do it with uh, machines, but the, the result is beautiful. Uh, we have a couple models. We haven't uh, come out to the market yet because we're we're polishing s some things and uh, on the sunglasses. I want to like really wrap up on on the on the brand uh, look. Uh, so we've been working on that for uh, I would say almost a year. We have. Mm -hmm. Um, these uh, few models uh, already done uh, and we are also working on accessories which are um, really cool too um, we have um, a wallet that is also wooden on the oh, on wow. the outside and it has special kind of cut which makes the the wood flexible so you can bend it in half and it doesn't break so that's pretty cool and yeah. we have the idea of um doing watches uh, watches at some point too uh, and an, another like big point uh behind the the brand idea is that we're all working with um uh, preserve, um, no, sorry, uh, sustainable uh, mm -hmm. uh, wood. So it's all wood that is uh, planted to grow here in Argentina and uh, from all these sustainable forests. So it's rapid grow. And uh, obviously, if at some point your glasses break, you can just mm -hmm. make a hole on your backyard and throw it in there and they will back, go back to earth uh, because oh, nice. the wood yeah. doesn't have any kind of treatment but uh, shows the essential oils like coconut oil uh, mm -hmm. so it can go back to the ground and be, be part of earth again so, nice yeah. that's great so what motivated you to start this I mean I Obviously, you wear sunglasses a lot, so I know you like them because mm -hmm. you have to wear them to do all the sports you do outside. But what motivated you to make your own brand and your own product? Uh, so I think the idea came from connecting back to, to Mar de Plata, uh, to the ocean, uh, with the the surfboarding, the culture, and it's something that I I truly hate seeing all this garbage being left on on the sand or a uh, floating there on the water. So I think that it, it it's a process that started somehow in in the house when we started composting so we we separate uh, mm -hmm. all the trash which it, it, it might sound uh, like prehistoric but took a lot a lot of time and it's something that it's not uh, hugely adopted to separate trash mm -hmm. so recycling is still not a big thing uh, and I really advocate for that so we started separating uh, all the, the bio waste and we have a, a compost box on the on the bag so we use it then to uh, we're starting to grow vegetables also so we use it for that and try to recycle whatever we can and since uh, martin uh, my partner uh, who has a workshop has been working with wood in one of our trip to a competition we were talking about ideas and what we could do and we embrace uh, that that culture and we're like well you know that what's missing in here uh 
something that also helps a little bit. And since we we also like that the that beach culture, that uh, like enjoying nature, uh, we started to put the pieces together. He has the 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 knowledge on uh, on the woodworking and i uh, came up with the idea so yep that that's where we started and i think you were you you, you saw a couple of photos of uh, mm-hmm. the models that we have and i'm gonna make sure i uh, get you one uh, awesome <laughs> nice well no and that's great and i think how do you so going to tying it to i guess work and what we do software development and now you're doing more of a a physical product. Is there any, for you, a connection and things you've learned from software? I think a lot of people, and I'll just say something and see if you agree, don't realize how creative a software developer has to be. You're constantly trying to solve problems with creative solutions, some that exist, some that don't already. Mm -hmm. So do you feel any connection there? And do you even agree with that? I guess. Oh yeah, totally. And that's totally true. Everything that we do at our work can be, implemented on this same uh, product development because uh, it, it, it's a product in the end and it's a product that you start maybe with an idea and then things happen uh, in the middle of the development and you have to look for fixes uh Things don't go out as suspected, and you have to look for workarounds. Uh, but then also, how to make a su- successful project, so, sort of um, speaking, uh, it's it's the same. I actually have a, a trailer for each of my my projects because mm-hmm. I manage them on the same way that we manage. Uh, um, and s- software implementations uh, with with tasks that we can follow and uh, that we can estimate that give you an idea of how long something is going to take. Uh, so yeah, um, I I think there there's um, a lot of how you put it. Uh, like similarities. Yes. Yeah. 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 Has doing doing this side work, I guess, what's the impact to you personally, like before you were doing, so you've been doing software development for 14 years. And then say in the last six, you've done a more focus on your businesses, like outside of that. What's been the impact on you overall? Like, has that, have you felt a change or shift in your just life or how you think about yourself as a result of having your career, but also doing things uh, apart. I think that overall it made me way more productive on everything that I do because it, the beginning when I was maybe just with uh, my development work and this outside of that, there was only like hobbies Mm-hmm. There were gonna be days in which you are distracted and you're not that productive. Uh, and we know that the a lot on our line of work it has to do with uh, with goals, right? We we have goals that we need to deliver. And now I just think that that I want to get done with this so as soon as the the work day finishes i want to have my time to work on the other stuff so mm-hmm. i'm i am more productive because i'm more focused on what i want to do and also a uh, developing a product uh, has made me better on my work too because um i i want to deliver something to people and mm-hmm. I wanted that to have a meaning, that, but it also that it, it looks nice, that it's comfortable, and you start looking into details, and and you carry over that from 
uh, your your projects to to work and even to everyday life to how things are arranged in my house uh, or how I take care of uh, other stuff like the car to say something so yeah, yeah uh, it it changes uh, your mindset to have uh, things more than work mm-hmm. yeah well mm-hmm. hey good, yeah. good plug right there <laughs> <laughs> nice um do you have any sort of mantra or just general advice like that you either got from someone or you give that you would like to share well, like I said, one of my mantras is right there tattooed on, on my leg, and it's mm-hmm. never give up. But I, I don't know if somebody told me uh, this or I read it somewhere or it's something that I realize right now. But it's never too late. Mm. Right? for anything so if you want to get in shape if you want to train to run a marathon if you want to learn how to surf how to skate uh, just go out there and and do it there's nothing stopping you yeah that's true and I think we've learned a lot about that recent like more recently like Mm -hmm. all the times i think the popular thing now is like well we all said we didn't have time for x y or z and then we were given all this time and didn't do it so now what was the lie we were telling ourselves right Mm -hmm. exactly (laughs) uh there were a lot of times um for example when i was uh uh, at college and I was studying it's like no I don't I don't have time to go to the gym when uh, I don't have that much to study I'll go back to the gym but then it was like well now I'm working mm-hmm. and I still don't have time to go to the gym it's like no if you really want to just make the time for that and then you see how everything fits in there it will at some yeah. point. <laughs> well, I have um, a set of questions that's the fun five. So it's uh-huh. like five at the end. I ask every guest. So I think I think this first one, you have a fun answer because I feel like we almost dress similarly with T-shirts. <laughs> so this is about uh, what's the oldest T-shirt you have and you still wear? And the people who really wear T-shirts do have the oldest T-shirt for sure. Oh, yes. Um Right now, I'm thinking on a on a Star Wars one that it's it's really old. It's from I think my my first trip, uh, my my first work trip outside of Argentina, and it has to be like eleven years old. Uh, and I've used it for longboarding, and it was on that a uh, downhill trip, so. Uh, it lost like half of the back, but I sew it together <laughs> because I well my, my mom sewed it together. I was still using it. it's like you can't use that shirt like that. Like mm-hmm. n- now it's just it's it's a drag, but it's there. And I might I, nice. I might have a, a an older one, uh, like my my band my band shirts like a Metallica one. I might have for twenty years, but that one I don't know what yeah. it is. <laughs> nice that's cool and it's good your mom <laughs> reluctantly supported <laughs> yeah. continuing to wear this shirt i know my mom has to um sew things for my like well i don't want to embarrass my sister i don't know if she can sew. <laughs> to be honest i have no idea i can't i know that i don't know if she can but she'll have my mom sew stuff and i'm always kind of think it's like so nice that the moms always know how to sew yeah. like thank goodness right you know so um Okay, so one thing that's been said, because we were all, like we mentioned, we were talking earlier about being stuck inside, and we still are for the most part. I mean, at least in London, and you guys, Mm -hmm. winter's coming, sir. Yeah, yeah. We're we're in the middle of summer, but yeah, probably they're locking us down again. 
actually there's a a curfew starting Tuesday. Yeah, from okay. I don't know yeah. eleven to six, something like that. Yeah. So, um, if every day was really Groundhog's Day, like in the movie, mm-hmm. and in the movie his song, the song on his alarm clock was always um, "I Got You, Babe," the Sunny and Cher song. <laughs> But what song would you have playing on your alarm clock if every day you had to wake up to the same song? Oh, that's a, that's a really good one. Uh, ah, and you know that I I love I love heavy metal music. I love rock. Uh, ah, so it's it's difficult to to say which one. Um, it's kind of the song you almost will sacrifice because. You're gonna hear it every day. That yeah, that that that, that is true. You're gonna get tired of it at some point. Uh, but I, I don't know why. Uh, I when I was uh, when I was in college, I had as an alarm clock this Slipknot uh, song, and it's uh, the. Um, it's a really known video is this Luna video, which is the first time that they take the, their mask off, and you will see them hanging from the from the microphones, uh, but you will never see their faces. Um, and it's called "The Blister Exists." Okay, and so that's the song. Yeah, that that is the song. And All right. Yeah, it, it, it's something on how those uh how that, that the the drum starts uh that it, it just hypes me every time and i never got tired of that good because you're gonna hear it every day right, <laughs> I, and good. i would need something that hypes me every day in the morning when i start yeah that's true you don't want to wake up to like a sad mm-hmm. breakup song or something um all right so actually you might have an answer you might be the first one for a certain answer on this one. So I'm going to see mm. if I'm right. Coffee or tea or neither? Uh, you you want me to say mate? <laughs> well, I just thought you might, but I, you don't have to. You don't have to. I don't have to be right. It's fine. What's your uh, answer though? Is that it? It will go between coffee and, and mate, but... Uh, where in the world you will see somebody that takes uh, a stuff to prepare matter with them every place they go? Because you've seen us Argentinians yeah. on our company meetings and all around the world drinking mate, and yeah, yeah, it's 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 totally mate. Uh, okay. It's it's a, it's a huge thing uh, when, for example, a uh, you put the kettle on the stove for the first time to heat the water to make mate for yourself because your parents will start you into drinking mate. That's almost on everybody's family here. But it's that time when you go and do it for yourself because you want to drink it that you start loving it. Mm. But yeah, yeah. yeah. And can you explain what is mate to people who don't know? I I know because I've been really lucky to mm-hmm. work with a bunch of amazing guys from Argentina, but most people I'd say mm-hmm. listening don't know. So it's basically a tea. Uh, mate is a it's a plant. So there's are these are dried leaves uh, that you put on a on a cup. Uh, we use all kind of uh, different ones. Um, uh, most popular ones uh, are like dried pumpkins open on, on the top and you would drink it through uh, a metal uh, a straw that's called bombisha. Uh, the water has to be hot but not boiling hot because imagine drinking from a straw boiling water from a metal yeah. straw. The, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend that to anyone. Uh, <laughs> And uh, uh, actually, yeah, people will kind of um, tell you some really nasty words if you give somebody without a warning a really hot mate, mm. and they, they they will remember you for days. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, 
And that's good, actually. It was sustainable before that was even popular with the metal straw. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's good. Yep. All right. Cool. When was either when was the last time you laughed so hard you cried or couldn't stop? Or what's something that you think about that makes you do that? Hmm. Uh, I think that it's most often with my older, uh, oldest friends. Because they, you know, that they connect you to these really happy times when we were more innocent and we will laugh about anything and everything. So uh, I, I love those times. I love the times that I go together with my friends and we, we start laughing about our trips from more like, 14, 15, uh, yeah. So I think that th those are the things. It's, uh, and it's maybe kind of very what I was going, but yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, well, it's kind of like, I know, and even with siblings, right? Like you just have these things you just know if you say it, you're like, yeah. that's it, you know? Yeah, it's, it's those internal jokes that you have with mm -hmm. some people but they, they they will connect you at some some really deep level that it it's not easy to get and it's through a relationship of something that has last for uh years so yeah yeah outlasted all the others you know mm -hmm. yep for sure all right and the last one of the five who inspires you right now and i say right now because i know we have people who are heroes but who's like right now inspiring you well Obviously, always uh, my my brother. He will always uh, inspire me, uh, and I will have to say that that my parents too, because uh, they have uh, a will power that it's well, it, it's it's difficult to calculate. It's it's infinite because they they have gone through all of these uh, the closest that any anybody else on on the family, but yeah, and uh, they will have they, they they have to uh, they, they will they were there for my brother. I mean, they would had to put up with me uh, dyeing my hair. Uh, putting earrings, uh, getting tattoos. <laughs> so that, all, all, that, all that sort of things. And they still, just you're still their son. So they're still there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's nice. That's awesome. So do you have anything you want? And I'll put links in the show notes. Do you have anything you just want to tell people the last thing like that you want to promote or? want them to look at if they want to know more about you a uh, sure yeah well i'll send you links to uh, the cross box so for anybody from anywhere that listens to your show um if at some point you're visiting here in Madre plata and you want to come train or you just want to see around uh um uh, Go to the to the beach, um, do some surfing. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can you can connect with me through through there. Awesome. And well, when whenever it's uh, online, I'll send you links to our sunglasses brand. And I don't know well, whatever other project might happens in the in the future. Awesome. Yeah, I, I doubt that's the last one. Well, cool. Well, Seba, this was great. It was good to get to chat more with you. And I think that um, just for people to hear about someone who's really doing a lot of different things, but very relatable things as well. And it's nice to hear more about the benefits of how exercise and and even having your own other side businesses really helps. So thanks for sharing all that with me. Really appreciate it. Well, no. Rabia, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for uh, having me on the on the show again.
Thanks for joining me this week. You can find out more about our guest in the show notes. The music you're probably moving to by now is by Joe Mafia. Find him on Spotify. That's Joe, M-A-F-F-I-A. And Rob Medke is responsible for our visual design. You can find him online by searching for Rob, M-E-T-K-E. Thanks, Rob. Let us know who you'd like to hear from or about your own experiences defining yourself outside of work at More Than Work Pod on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Give us a follow. Or visit our website at RobbiaSaid.com. Subscribe on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening to More Than Work. We'll be back next week with another guest. In the meantime, while being kind to others, don't forget to be kind to yourself.